mind, UFOs, and the holographic matrix. In my new book, UFOs, God from Inner Space, I have sought to introduce to open-minded UFO enthusiasts the concept that these spinning orbs of light are intra-dimensional phenomena that transcend the boundaries of space-time and interact with the ELF frequencies emanating from the mind of the perceiver. Behind this process, another phenomena exists. It is an amazing matrix where mind and UFO unite as waves to form a network of alternate dimensions or parallel universes. Quantum physicist Fred Allen Wolf wrote about this matrix he described as a hologram of parallel universes when he said, quote, the only way to have time unredeemable is to have it exist as a maze of parallel universes. Perhaps a better image is a hologram of parallel universes. What one sees when viewing the hologram depends on the viewpoint one takes. And that viewpoint alters the hologram because it alters the probabilities by moving in time. After all, if the hologram is constructed from transacting quantum waves moving in all directions, then who assigns the probabilities? Somehow a field of consciousness must illuminate the hologram and it assigns the probabilities." Unquote. I will identify the source of that field of consciousness. It is the person who observes the UFO. Dr. Fred A. Wolf was no doubt referring to the fact that we mind travel between dimensions or parallel universes, and that we also have the ability to collectively alter events occurring in time through the interaction of individual perspectives. The realization that we can alter events occurring at different points in time is very exciting because it theoretically establishes a definite holographic connection between mind and physical events. This means that a hologramic mind can manifest as a physical object. In fact, we know that the whole of reality is a hologram of interacting wave patterns controlled by the collective mind of its creators. That is, we are all creating a holographic event. Mind as the creator of the event is one of the essential key points of my personal encounter and apparently the viewpoint of many other UFO researchers. For instance, after many years of research, J. Allen Hynek, a physicist hired originally by the government to debunk the theory that UFOs are extra terrestrial vehicles, came to the conclusion there was a link between this phenomena and paranormal activity. To come to this conclusion, Heinick referred to hundreds of reports of paranormal UFO events associated with anomalous behavior. These overwhelming paranormal elements led Heinick to reject the original idea that UFOs were solid nuts and bolts hardware from outer space. Referring to these paranormal events, Heineck was quoted as saying, I abandoned an extraterrestrial hypothesis in 1967 when my own field investigation disclosed an astonishing overlap between psychic phenomena and UFOs. The objects and apparitions do not necessarily originate on another planet and may not even exist as permanent constructions of matter. It is more likely that we see what we want to see and interpret such visions according to our contemporary beliefs." Unquote. He was not the only researcher to reach this conclusion. There were many others, such as John Keel, Amy Michelle, Ivan Sanderson, Charles Ford, Jacques Vallée of Pontois, France. Vallée, an astute UFO investigator with an impressive background in physics, received a BS degree in mathematics at the Sorbonne followed by an MS in astrophysics. Known for astute observations, his research led him to theorize that this mysterious space-time phenomena, popularized as extraterrestrial craft, might actually be more complex. He wrote, 
quote, the apparent ability of UFOs to manipulate space and time suggests radically different and richer alternatives, unquote. The question that was aroused by these remarks is, where do UFOs come from if they are not extraterrestrial visitors, and how might these paranormal objects materialize into the Earth's plane? The overwhelming number of reports of UFO encounters analyzed by Dr. Kenneth Ring, who wrote the book Heading Toward Omega, indicates that the phenomena has more to do with a transformation of consciousness that is connected to the appearance of the light. I believe that our minds also interact with the collective unconscious or archetypal energy fields. The archetypal plane provides a bridge of mental symbols that unite the collective matrix with the individual mind. In other words, we all join together on a psychic or subatomic level to create group events that help us change or transform in consciousness as a whole. Namaste.